This screencast is to show you how to create an offline activity assignment for a student. Just for an example, what I would mean by an offline activity for a student is you may have your student sitting at class exam in the classroom right in front of you or they may be performing a lab activity. So it's basically anything where they are not using the computer to complete this assignment. So as an offline activity, just to do this, you must of course make sure that editing is turned on. And when editing is turned on, you'll be greeted with these two options, add a resource and add an activity. By clicking add an activity, underneath the assignments options, you have a variety of options here in 2.2, Moodle 2.2. In this case, click an offline activity. So, for example, this is an in-class exam. We then must type a description into it. Once you've typed the information in here in the description section, and remember, please offer as much content in here in this description section because the more you give here, the less the questions that you will be greeted with from your students. Click here for the assignment day, we'll say it's the 4th of July and we'll say it's at 11 o'clock. And it finishes at 12 o'clock. And of course it finishes on the day because it's an in-class exam, you don't want them staying overnight in your college. So when it comes to grade, even though it's worth 6% of your final mark, I actually find grading it out of 100 and let Moodle do all the uh, weighting and, and categorization and uh, it's explained in another tutorial how to actually do this. You can just grade simply by giving it a grade here or of course you can use a rubric uh, facility. That's 100% up to you and you design the rubric to match your particular assignment. Let's just put this in the continuous assessment categories. These are categories that I've created myself. And as I said, it's, it's mentioned in another tutorial to do with weighting your assignments. And a variety of other different options open to you. But for the time being, I just want to click save and display. So this is what the student will see. They will get this information here. And remember, the more information that you type in here, the less questions you will get from your students. More importantly, it will tell them when the assignment is on and when it will be finished. From your point of view as a teacher, as a lecturer, you will see this hyperlink up here. The student will not see this hyperlink. So when you click on this, and you then have the option to grade all of your students. So here I have a list of all of my students, obviously their contact details, and then the grades that I want to give them in here. So let's just say I give Danielle 99, I give Robin 93, and I give uh, Gary 91, and so on. And in here, I can type in any feedback that I want to give my students. Now, don't be deceived by the size of this box. You can keep typing to your heart's content in here. The one thing that I will say to you is, when you do all of these, this is what's called quick grading, and when you have all of these, and you give them all of the grades that you want to give them, uh, when you do that, don't forget to click save all my feedback. Um, and then that will be kept there, and it will say here, last modified by the student, and it is last modified by the, the teacher. If you want to upgrade it, for example, you want to give Danielle here more feedback, you just click on update and it will actually bring up a screen for Danielle and you can type in here, this is your standard WYSIWYG editor, you can add in pictures, videos, whatever else you want to add in um, <coughs> to give feedback to your students. And remember of course just click save changes uh, once you're finished. So once you've clicked and typed in this feedback, that is not the be all and end all, you can come back and update it at any stage. And each time you update it, or each time you grade it, your student will get an email and feedback um, will be attached to that email with their appropriate grade. One thing to point out is, is now that I've graded Danielle, Robin, Gary, and, and Jan, and Emily, when I come back tomorrow to grade Alex and Paul, and indeed the remaining of the students, what will happen is the remaining students will get 
the email with their grade. The students that I graded yesterday uh, will not get a second email. They will only get a second email if I click update and then hit save changes. And so once they've got one email, that's it. They're not going to be bombarded with emails. So what's the advantage for a teacher in this perspective? Why don't I just um, why don't I just as a teacher input my grades directly into an Excel sheet? Well, what happens? And uh, the obvious advantage I've just mentioned, which is the student, as soon as you correct it, the student gets feedback and their grade. The student will only see their own grade; they won't see their colleagues, which means you're not going to get hassle from your students in the corridor after you stick the notice up on the, the course notice board. Um, you can see all of the course grades at a glance. You can see all the the course grades for all of the students. Um, in here and you can quickly look at a glance who is missing what assignment and as I alluded to earlier on you can actually categorize each one of these assignments and say well these assignments are worth a total of 6% the other set of assignments are worth a total of 7% and so on um, so that's why the advantage of Moodle uh, that's the advantage that Moodle has over typing your grades into Excel so <coughs> Just to, to recap on what we do, let's just come back in here into the course itself. Once you're back in the course itself and editing is turned on, click on Add an Activity and that's where you'll find it under the Assignments block you will find Offline Activity and then just follow the steps that I taught you. The key to it is of course, make sure your editing is turned on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to visit my blog enhancingteaching.com where you'll find more resources for integrating technology into your classroom. Thank you very much for your time.